graphic designer, so it's very exciting to have a ceramicist because that's what I'm into. So I am forcing <laughs> everyone to. <Yeah>. Have it. <laughs> they, will, they will start leaving one after the other, like going to the bar. <laughs> and it will be just you and me at some point. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, as I said to you, it's up to you. I want to like. Yeah, I, I can introduce myself. Uh, I'm not so familiar with Zoom, but uh, maybe at some point I can, if I figure it out, uh, show some of my work. And uh, I also got, uh, I gathered a few stuff from my uh, flat that is related to what I do. And uh, yeah, so my name is Jeremy. My name is Jeremy Bellina. Uh, my accent is from uh, France. I, I live currently in, uh, in Berlin, in Germany, uh, since about uh, six years. I moved here uh, for, for work uh, and to live with my partner. And uh, I started ceramic uh, four years ago. So I started in, in Berlin. Uh, yeah, so basically before I, I don't really have a, an education in, in ceramics or art or whatever. I studied uh, supply chain management, so it's not really to what I do right now. I mean, sometimes, I, yeah, if I open an Excel, I know a few formulas still, but uh, worked mostly in, uh, so in my, my, my career before ceramic was mostly in, in, in fashion, but in logistics, supply chain, uh, yeah, finance, stuff like that. And at some point, they really, it really got on my nerve. And uh, companies are not really respectful of their employees in fashion. So I just gave it up. I was doing pottery in my free time already for a few months. And so when I quitted my job, I already had a studio with uh, everything to do pottery and to start a business. So I had the space, I had the equipment. And so I decided to just, uh, yeah just do it and just do what I like to do. And uh, so, so far since the last four years, the plan is to hopefully never have to go back to, uh, to my old uh, job and to my old uh, field of expertise. And so, so far it's working. Like I see the end of the tunnel and hopefully I can make it into, into pottery. Yeah, so I define myself as a potter. Uh, some of my work is, very functional, very uh, connected to like tableware and so on. And over the past two years, I started making more shapes that are, I'm trying to step away from functionality. So I still make, uh, I always have to give it a purpose to whatever I create, but I encourage the people not to use my vase for flowers or not to use my jug for water, just to, just as a, as a statement piece. But I, I'm having a hard time stepping away and just creating something that is purely st structural or, st yeah, or sculpture, basically. But slowly, I'm, I'm getting there. So we have, yeah, that's more or less the introduction. Uh, I don't know if, I sh if it's any useful to share my Instagram. That's the only kind of presentation I have of, to give you some of you an idea of the recent stuff I've been doing, I have no idea how to do this. Share screen, should I try that? Yeah, yeah. I think that should work. Yeah, so yeah. like uh, the stuff, uh, so, so in there, there's a little bit, it's a bit of a mix. So there's some tableware and then there are some pieces that are a little bit more, uh, yeah, structural. So some, some funny looking vases, uh, so that's, I mean, the, probably the stuff that could be the most interesting for you because you can't reinvent a cup or a plate, but a vase, a jug, uh, something like this, uh, there is room for, 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 for a lot of changes. Mm -hmm. So uh, basically with my work as a potter, at the beginning, I was only focusing on tableware. So like if we go back in the days, I was mostly doing just tableware. And uh, basically because I didn't know to do anything else, I was really focused on the pottery wheel. That's what I wanted to master. And uh, once I was good at the pottery wheel, I started stepping away from it. And also because I realized with the pottery wheel, you are a little bit limited in terms of the shapes you're gonna create. Uh, pottery is a very old craft, it's 16,000 years, and they have been making 
pottery most of the time using that tool, the pottery wheel for most of the time. So you can't really step away from shapes that are already existing. I felt like I wanted to bring something new. Like, so I started working a little bit more with hand building. So there are a bunch of hand building techniques, but the one I like the most is working with slab. So you're basically uh, slabbing, uh, like you have a thin layer of a uh, thin board of ceramic. And uh, depending uh, how old that slab is, if it's like fresh, it's uh, very, uh, it's, it's basically clay. But if you wait a little bit, it turns into something that has plasticity and that you can mold the shape you, and, and put it in the shape you want. And so nowadays, what I do is more connecting uh, both techniques. So I would start with the wheels, so like for instance, a shape that. I really enjoy making was maybe this one. Actually, I have it here as well. Yeah. So I can't see that well in this picture. Maybe. So it's basically a standard vase, a standard vessel that I create on the wheel. And then I start cutting through it and reassemble it to create something a little bit different. So it's like this, this bird looking jug. And uh, so there are shapes like this where I started understanding better the direction I wanted to take. And for me, it's a matter of using, starting from a silhouette that is very simple, very basic, like a moon, like a balloon silhouette made on the wheel. I mean, for a lot of potters, that could be the end of the story. Like I made the, you made a base and I, tr and, and that's only the starting point, right? For me, then I start cutting through it and reassembling it and attaching different parts to turn it into the silhouette that I desire to have. So at the starting point, there is always a silhouette that I try to, to I always see just a, just a silhouette, so just a, you know, a black and white uh, thingy. So I don't think colors, I don't think, uh, yeah. And I try to create that profile silhouette. Usually it's from the profile that I see it and, uh, and, and see if I manage to, 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 to create it. Uh, so I think what I enjoy the most is working uh, with slab and creating um, creating a silhouettes away from the wheel, or I only use the wheel for the, to, to, to create a few pieces as a starting point. So like jug like this, it's basically a basic shape that I cut halfway through. And then suddenly it has a, it has a profile. It starts looking more like a, a shape that is more, a little bit more animal. And then I do a nose and then a neck and, and that's, that's it. So it's not the most functional vessel because you lose capacity by cutting through it. And it's maybe a little bit, unstable on its base, but I just like the way it's uh, sitting and being all proud and, uh, yeah, and elegant and light as well. Uh, there are, I also a shape that I use a lot is this, uh, this little cheese uh, in the center. So this is a shape that I, it's, it's basically just two plates stuck to one another. So yeah, you make plates. I mean, I don't make them on the wheel. I make them with a mold and I stick them together to turn them into like a tom, like a camembert or a cheese tom. And then from that, I start adding pieces. So for me, it's just like a Lego. Uh, and I don't really draw I, uh, my, my, my silhouettes. I just picture them in my head and I assemble all the pieces. So like for this piece, for instance, it's one, two, so two plates. Uh, a neck and a base that are the shape, the same. So like one cylinder that I cut and then a collar. And for me, I just see it as a assembling small Lego. So I could have done it upside down and still come up with another shape. So it's very, in a way, childish and playful the way I assemble, but I want the result to be clean and, 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 and so far mostly symmetrical stuff. And, and uh, with nice and clean junction and also very light. Uh, so the, the, the slabs are, are, are not that, uh, that, that thick, they are really light. So people, when I, when I meet other potters, they are always thinking like, this is too light. Like it's because uh, you want your ceramic to sit and to be really nice and sturdy and not to fall down because it's fragile. But I don't really care about that. If you, if you care about it, you will be careful and it will not fall down. Uh, yeah. so it's your responsibility if you yeah. but I mean so far I haven't broke any of my stuff it's it's only people I only hear sometimes they, they make those flat vase fall and uh, yeah what else I can guide you through some of the most recent stuff so that's the stuff for me it's always the recent stuff that is the most exciting 
mm. in terms of shapes. So recently I had this, there was this, uh, this exposition in Berlin that we were doing with other potters. And so we had to bring in three pieces, uh, three new stuff. And, I, and so far all of my work is very symmetrical and I felt like that's, what was, that's the thing that was pleasing me the most. When I tried to analyze why does a shape pleases me and I thought it was symmetry, just like you're attracted by people with very symmetrical faces, et cetera. And so I challenged myself to see whether or not I could fall in love with a piece that is a little bit asymmetrical. So that's what I started doing with those. And here again, I mix a bunch of different techniques. So like uh, in terms of making this, the, the main structure is made on the wheel. It's like a, a, a basic straight cylinder that I squeeze. Same for the donut, you can make those in, on the wheel, they are hollow. And then I just cut through the flat cylinder. I mean, the squeezed flat cylinder. And then I reassemble all the holes that I cut so that it's, uh, it's sealed and waterproof. You know? And so here, yeah, it was for me, I mean, there is still a sense of symmetry because you have like the eyes and the nose, uh, uh, but I was happy that I managed to create something that I was uh, attracted to, even though this is not the same size as this and this is going lower and yeah. So it was, it was this, this shape that I was showing to that, uh, that exhibition, this little guy here in the back. And this is the work of other potters from Berlin. There's a lot of us actually. Uh, but there's a big pottery scene here in Berlin. Uh, yeah. So, and so in my work, I always try to, I always try to keep it a little bit minimal to some extent. I, I think my work is minimal. Um, I try to work a little bit with balance. Like this was an attempt that I was making. Uh, it's actually failed after the second fire, but I'm doing it again to fail again and fail better. Uh, is it broke? So this is the round, uh, the round uh, structure that I was telling you about. And this is this round cheese that I've been pushing a lot and trying to see what can I do out of it. So I split it in two and I reunite it like this. So I have this heartbreak shape. Uh, I split it in two and I try to assemble it uh, perpendicular as if they are facing one another and like having a talk. And uh, I think I did some other stuff to it, but I don't remember. Oh yeah, I did that one where you have like this retro looking, this was inspired a little bit by, by Batman. You know, Batman in the nineties, <laughs> <laughs> he has the greatest aesthetic. It was like uh, so art deco, like, for, I mean, our, our parents were letting letting us watch this thing, you know, and I think they were so right about it because the the, the the cartoons from that time, they were so cool. And yeah, when this came out, I felt like, oh, this is really art deco and so on. And it really reminded me of uh, of, of that movie, yeah, of, of the, the, those, those uh, comics. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, same again, it's this round shape that I cut through and I cut also the sides. The sides. And I, then I try to, to reassemble it. So it's always starting from the same thing. So this basic round, warm and, and, and light uh, shape and, and trying to, to split it up and then reassemble it. So it's a lot of cuts. It's like playing a, playing a, a fruit ninja with it and then put it in the pot. <laughs> but, but in a clean way. So there's a lot, yeah. I, yeah. And then, after this, they get uh, covered in glazes. So for me, glazing is a big part of the process as well. In pottery, you see more and more people going to something a little bit more primal, like where you want to put forward the stone and the natural side. So like you would see uh, glazes, uh, pieces where you only see the stone, right? And they are not covered in glazes. I'm not really into that aesthetic, especially with pottery. I feel like the piece is not finished. Like, oh, you forgot to, it's naked, basically. You forgot to put, a, to put something on it. So for me, the, the, the glazing, I, it's still a bit of a mystery zone. I experiment a lot. I don't fully understand what I create, like the, because it's chemistry, basically. So you have a bunch of minerals that you assemble. For me, I just do it like I'm just following the recipe that I find online or in a book or, or we have mostly online in books. And, uh, and also what I do a lot is I do uh, layering work. So I would, uh, for instance, this is a layering between a, a glossy white black and a glossy white on top. And uh, I know that both glaze will interact well together. 
And I was really happy when I got this sort of white noise uh, effect, like this cream and cookie effect. Um, and the, 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 the glaze that I'm into the most at the moment is uh, the one that I put on the, on the Batman uh, shape. It's like this color uh, effect. So it's, it's a glaze that uh, when you touch it, it feels a little bit like plastic, like melted plastic. So it's still very soft. But it has all those asperity, all those little craters, like it's the, the surface of the moon, or like a, like a, something that has been in the in the bottom of the sea for too long. Mm. And yeah, I know that I know a little bit about that one. That all those craters are because of uh, silicon carbide, which is like a mineral that generates those little holes. But I, I wouldn't be able to tell you much more about it. I just read that silicon carbide, and I also spent a lot of time trying to put my hands on that stuff. I felt like I was buying drugs. Yeah, I couldn't <laughs> find silicon carbon anywhere. And then I ended up on a very shady website and like where they were selling minerals, like a really bad looking website. But yeah, that was that was what I was looking for. So I, I found a few bags and now I've got, uh, I can make those, 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 those funny looking lazies. I also have one in uh, that looks a little bit like a, so this one flakes a little bit more. It looks a little bit like, I don't know, like Rice Krispies. It has a, it's the same recipe with a different colorant. And, and I get a different, uh, slightly different. So that one flakes off a little bit. So it's, 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 it's really not soft like the, blue, like the blue one, but I really like both of them. And this feels really organic, like uh, something that, that sits at the bottom of a tree or from the forest or something like that. Yeah, yeah it looks like moss. Yeah, like my eggs, that's, the, that's what I was going for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's, those are the end result. But to be honest, what I enjoy the most sh uh, sharing is, is the making. For, so for me, like once the piece is done and it corresponds to what I was hoping for or uh, goes beyond my expectation, I'm happy, of course. But uh, I tend to either try to get rid of it like by selling it or putting it on the side. So I don't really look at my stuff that much but i really enjoy the process of making it so that's what really was amazing when i discovered pottery and that that's why this hobby took over a little bit all parts of my life is is the process of, of really starting from mud and ending up with something that looks like a really really good like a, like a treasure and the glaze as well makes it even look the glazing makes it look even more precious and it is precious in a way because it's it's full of, of minerals of pre some of them precious minerals. So I'm I, uh, so I started like especially during the lockdown sharing a lot uh, the, the the process. You know you have those like those reels, those little videos. I started making a lot of those, and uh, and I think I, it was really really uh, uh, beneficial for my uh, for my social media growth and so on. Maybe that's also uh, Noemi, you 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 discovered me. I don't know. And, um, and also that's how I learned pottery in the first place, right? Pottery for me, I just uh, Googled stuff on YouTube or found videos on Instagram and so on. And that's how I answered some of my questions because there are people out there that are generous enough to share some recipes that they came up with or share the process of making. And now that I'm confident with my craft and that I know what I'm doing basically, because before it was not the case, I was just like, yeah, I have no clue, basically. Uh, no, I enjoy sharing that and, and hopefully helping other people uh, uh, yeah, get better with their technique, with their craft, or, or figure out new way of to use the, 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 the material. Because if you go, I mean, if you stick to the wheel, you are at the end of the day a little bit limited. But then if you start playing a little bit with hand building and so on, there's so many other ways to 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 yeah to play with the with the clay and yeah the stone one. uh yeah i think that's that's a bit about it maybe i can stop sharing uh stop sharing you want to show us one of the the videos yeah. oh my god cool. <laughs> oh yeah i wanted to show you this guy because i i showed you the the the, the, the picture. so that was the the bird shape face i kept uh the jug so i kept one for myself so it's not really uh <laughs> It's a bit thin, especially the handle is very stupid. It's very thin. So I think we used it for two meals with my girlfriend. And then we thought like, yeah, this, this is too, 
there is too many too much risk if we use it so this is the kind of stuff that just sits on our side table and then i have to make a vases like this that are hand built where it's just like a bit inspired by the i had a bit of an obsession with water towers like especially in france we have the most funny looking ones i think there is a water tower competition among architects so the one with the, come up with the craziest looking one so yeah i i always see them as a uh, ufos you know like i don't know why they create water towers looking like this maybe it's to, for the for the next uh, martian invasion or stuff like this and also found this that was when i was at the beginning of my craft making small little ceramics so yeah, kind of the, the, the evolution of, of, of the things. But you said something about videos. Maybe I can try to share again. Um, sure. Yeah, the videos, I mean, videos are a little bit like, uh, you know, it's clickbait. But if you spend so much time making a video, you want people to see it, right? So I will spare <laughs> you the, the, the music and stuff like this. Yeah, I, I like this video, actually. Can you see it? Is it playing? Yeah. yeah. So basically, I start with the structure on the wheel because this is the most time, it's the most efficient way. Like this takes 10, 10 minutes of the wheel. And then I, before it dries too much, I start working with it and, and, and making it collapse. And this was actually for a friend. It's a, it's a fruit bowl and she has a very narrow kitchen. So she cannot uh, have a, 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 a round uh, fruit bowl. So she wanted something that is more narrow and we made it like a melty, uh, like a melty boat. So that's what I said about combining different techniques is like trying to figure out what is the most efficient. So the most efficient for my structure is the wheel. So since I mastered the wheel, I can do that. And then I, I, I keep on working uh, at the table. Uh, when the clay is still very soft, you can really like uh, twist it and, 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 and bend it and melt it down. And, and then you just, uh, we were using a slab, I closed the bottom because it was a hollow cylinder for me for me to be able to deform it. So this is a, an example of something where I use different techniques. Uh, yeah, that one was also very similar system. So the cylinder was on the wheel and then I started turning it into something that looks more like a, like a flat uh, sort of vacuum. Uh, this is a slab. So the slab is gonna fill up all of my cuts. And usually when I do this, since I didn't draw it down, I only visualize it in my head. So I have, I think like, oh, it's not, it's not gonna look good. It's not, so you have to be confident enough that eventually at the <laughs> end of the day, you're gonna end up with something that is actually good looking. So like only at that point, you know, when the donuts came in, I was like, oh, that's special. That's, that's something new, you know? And uh, yeah, I really, I really enjoy uh, sharing that part of the process. I try not to skip any parts because sometimes uh, in the pottery field, some people, they like to keep some, of, some stuff secret. I have this a little bit with the, with the glaze, the ingredients, you know, the recipes. I mean, yeah, because this is the part where I, it took me the most time figuring out is all those recipes. And the, so I, I, I'm, still not in a, I'm still not fully open about my craft where I'm willing to share the ingredients as well. I, I, this is the one thing that I want to sort of keep on, keep on a secret. And I really like those as well. Sorry. I, I, I show this and then I shut up. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, he, it was just this really, I had some, some glazes that I wanted to try. So I needed, a, I needed a, a shape to put it on, a silhouette to put it on. And I thought about using a, because I don't usually go for handles because I feel like they are too complex. And since my work is very minimal, I think if I had an end, a handle, it's too, it's too much. But here, I, I really like the idea of having a, just a lace, like a little snake, as if the handle was thrown. And it's perfect, like a spaghetti handle. You know, when you know if your spaghetti is cooked, you throw it against the against the ceramic tile of your room, and then it sticks in a funny way. But I mean, here it sticks in a perfect way, and it really feels like a like a little snake, like a never-ending. And with the 
with the spinning, I really like uh, how, how this came out. And uh, yeah, so yeah, because with handle as well, you yeah, yeah, the, the, the last one I really, I really enjoyed. But uh, yeah, that was a, an example of uh, a handle work. I don't really do so much handles. Yeah, sorry about that. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. So good. Yeah, really cool. Thanks. I was going to say earlier, do you find, uh, I find the glaze terrifying. <laughs> it's the glaze. Yeah, it's, it's terrifying. I feel like, I know it's yeah, a silly really beginner thing, but you have something you're proud of and then you glaze it and then it looks shit. <laughs> yeah, it, it, that's the thing with glazing is like, from 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 that step onwards, things can only go wrong. You know, you, they can they can go as planned, and but they can only go wrong. It's rare that they go better than expected. So mm -hmm. it, you're basically taking a risk. But uh, but yeah, I, I, I find it. Uh, I find I think it's worth it. And I think that the the nude ceramic makes a nice Instagram timeline, but at the <laughs> same time, it makes it a little bit a little bit boring, a little bit dull and. Uh, it's like this, yeah, it's too, I like colors, I like glossy stuff, I like, yeah, things that look precious. And uh, I, just just having a nude pot, sometimes it just makes me feel like the, the ones I bought at the, at the garden center, like those terracotta stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not that, yeah, yeah, there are some really beautiful stuff that are nude and that deserve to be nude, but yeah, it's like, yeah. And it's nude, it's like, it's weird. It's like, yeah, <laughs> press up like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool, thank you so much. I don't know if there's any questions. So I have lots, but I think- Why don't you do something? I was gonna say, um, do you, because obviously like you do your own things, but how does it work when you have inquiries? Do you feel like you're less, um, Free creatively, or like then uh, when you, I, it really thinking. depends of the of the of the clients. So sometimes they come for the right reasons, or they, they come because they've seen something that I've made and they want something similar. And most of the time, if it's something new I'm, and that I'm still into, I'm happy to, to 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 do it again or to to give it a little twist. But yeah, obviously sometimes they even come with the work of some other person, and this feels really really wrong. So. I, I try not to do it, uh, but then if uh, they wave the money at me, then uh, yeah. <laughs> I might, uh, I, might uh, I might do it just once, you know, and, and try to hide it as long as possible and not put my name on it. But uh, yeah, usually I'm really open and some people, as, it depends on the people, but some people have actually really great ideas and, 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 they're, and they're also, some people are extremely challenging, like the, the my friend who asked for that fruit bowl, uh, I didn't know if I was going to be able to make it. And like, I had, uh, because I'm used to making that melting shape, but in a, in a, in a round way, not in a, in a flat and, and straight way, like a, like a boat, like a, yeah. so usually I tell the person like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I can make it. And, and, but usually I make it anyway. And I, then I give the price. And, uh, so people, Sometimes they don't even end up buying it, but for me, I, I still don't. Uh, yeah, I, it, it, I decided to make it before giving you a quote, just to know whether or not I was able to make it. And, yeah. and for me, it's, so it's 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 just uh, it's like training, you know. It's like uh, challenging yourself and figuring out how am I going to be able to make this. And and what, if you manage, it's just like yeah, you feel you feel on top of the world, you know. But you just unlocked a new a new level in a video game or something. Mm. So that's, that's a bit, uh, yeah, how oh, I see it. It's crazy uh, how you managed to do that without drawing anything. Like, without drawing? Well, As, without drawing. I'm, I'm, I'm very bad at drawings. That's the main problem. If I would be better, <laughs> I would be too good. But yeah, my sketchbook is just, uh, yeah, it's just, it's really bad. And I never have the right pen. I always like, you know. So I, I just, uh, but for, for instance, with I have a lot of tableware sitting everywhere, and since my shapes are very minimal, and uh, and and I, I would describe you the, the the way I work, like as if I assemble uh, cubes, you know, like uh, like your like your niece or your nephew, you know, they assemble, they make little towers of cubes. 
And so with table where you can really do that and say, oh, I'm looking for a new vase silhouette. silhouette. So you take uh, two cups and one bowl and then you assemble it or two bowls and one cup. And then you see how it would look like. And then you adjust a little bit the, 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 the dimensions of the base and the neck and the, and the body uh, in order to keep the, the proportions right. Yeah. Because, but, but I think this is good enough for me in that step. But yeah, if it was a little bit complex, or I, I would probably need to, to, to get into drawing at some point. Mm. Uh, yeah. It's not mm. something I'm good at. So. I used to draw as a child, but I was much better. But it's one of those things, if you, do, if you stop doing it, you, you always end up drawing. You, you basically, my drawing skills are the same as uh, when I was 14. From eight to fourteen, I was like getting super, super good, super better, and then at some point you just like, so you draw the same way you drew as a fourteen-year-old the rest of your life, which is really sad. <laughs> For me. Any other Do you think um, there's such a big ceramic scene in Berlin because it's cheap to live in Berlin? Is that the reason? I think was there like a history of ceramics? In Germany? No, there's no real history of ceramics, and uh, uh, I mean, it, like we were talking about it this weekend. It was the end of the gallery uh, expo, so we were like 19 uh, ceramicists showing their work, like three pieces. So there was something like 50 something pots, and it was. It's funny because in France and in other countries, you have galleries organizing those events. And here in Germany and, and even in Berlin, no one cares, you know? And mm -hmm. so we had to organize it ourselves. So it was our own initiative, you know, for us and, and by us and et cetera. And we was, it was a big success, but mm -hmm. uh, no galleries don't really value this as, a, as, an, as, an, as an art. It's, it's just a craft for, for German people. So we're not really artists, we're just craftsmen like, uh, like shoemakers or stuff like this. Even if you're expressing something in your, in your vase, in your shapes. So like there are countries that value it uh, much more, like in, in Australia or even in Austria, in Vienna, you have those, you have, uh, uh, they, they, but I think it's, it's a lot related to history. Like for, for German people, uh, ceramic is just a cup made out of, to drink out of, you know, so they don't really see the beauty of, uh, of a, of, a, of a funny looking vase or something like this. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so for, I mean, this is, I, I hear this from my friends who are actually strictly doing uh, art and, and not tableware and so on. And it's really tricky for them to sign deals with gallery or be represented in Germany because uh, they, they don't really care. And they're represented in New York and in other countries, but here not in Berlin. And about the cheap rent, yes, indeed. Berlin is very cheap, <laughs> and I would uh, I've never made that move anywhere else. Uh, I would have uh, uh, knocked on some other uh, fashion brand door uh, when I gave up my old job. If I was living in Paris or in London, yeah. Yes, Amsterdam. I started ceramics in London, but uh, it's uh, basically uh, very, very pricey, and I am lying, and I am eating beans at the end of the month <laughs> because it costs too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, uh, yeah I, I lived in, 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 in London for, I mean, I was, I was a child, I was, I was uh, until I was 17 or 16, so it was all taken care of, uh, my, my parents were my <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I remember uh, I was uh, it was astonishing for me moving from France to, to London and, and seeing the cost of life and just like seeing like, yeah. Mm. Yeah, but uh, we are mm. Berlin is very, it's, it's an amazing city for this and being able to pay your rent and the rent of your studio and uh, all of your bills just by making pots. It's a, uh, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a crazy thing, <laughs> but it's, uh, it, it, yeah, I think it's possible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. <laughs> I was gonna say, do you ever collaborate with other people when making ceramics? Do, do I have sorry again the word? Do you ever collaborate with other people? Oh like, yeah, work with others to make something. No, I I, I haven't. Sometimes I, I wish. Uh, I, I, let me think. Maybe I have. I made. Oh uh, yeah, I I did uh, because I since I don't draw. Once I did an attempt when I I have a friend who was was doing illustration and and painting and so on. And I really mm. like what he did, so I wanted uh, to put something, he, uh, one of his stuff, on a, on a plate. And uh, but the, the, I really loved, loved the, art, the the outcome of it, 
but the people uh, around me didn't really uh, see the beauty in it. So we, we, <laughs> we stopped the collaboration after this, after the, after the, the, the sample, after the template. But uh, some, sometimes I, I want to, and also I see some, some other ceramics in Berlin who have very, uh, so one has a very unique colorways and one has very unique shapes. And sometimes when they, you know, I give you my colorway and I, we put it on one of your shapes, and it, it is really, you end up with really intriguing results because you see both of their universe. So, so at some point, I wish that uh, yeah, someone is going to be willing to, to but I'm, I'm a shy person, so I don't really propose those things. I wait for them to come to me, but I feel <laughs> it could be, could be fun. But I, I've seen like in the last few months, two or three collaborations between two, between uh, usually it's two person, two Berlin ceramists together, and they, they were really cool projects. But then comes the, the topic like uh, who owns what and you know like uh, like okay the vase is worth 200 euro but you built it and i only painted it like how do you split that uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I you said about your uh, exhibition berlin you had like all the ceramics did you guys like how did you organize that no in terms of organization like was it based around the theme or like the concept or was yeah it just, no like, showroom? The, the theme the theme was the vessel uh, so it was called the vessel vessels expo uh, exposition and uh, so no we had to make a vessel so something that contains uh, so most people came up with uh, with vases basically uh, I think there was one fontaine or a dude built a, a ceramic fontaine but I think uh, that was the only exception and I think yeah no th so that was just the vase and the idea was mostly for us to to bring three of our most precious uh, creations and uh, I was curious so they would uh, all come together you know in this small room because it was it was not that big and it was crazy the way they so for instance my piece were in three different corners uh, and the neighbor my ne the neighbor's piece were from other people right so that were not and still it made so much sense so there was always something connecting the piece to the next one and so on so when you were walking through the room it was always like that uh, uh, that red uh, red path also. so it was uh, it made a lot of sense uh, all together and at the end of the day when the the the, the, pros, the project was already like we all come from berlin they're all made from berlin that's good enough right uh, as a film uh, it was yeah, uh, yeah. the good enough film uh, yeah but uh, I hope there's going to be more of those and, and so that more other people will have the chance. Because, yeah, I mean, I guess it's the same in London, but ceramic right now is so much in fashion and there are so many new people like uh, that are just doing this uh, as a hobby and, and, and but they, they come up with crazy things. And that's the thing as well. We, when, you don't, we, when you don't have an education in a craft, you know, you don't really know what you're doing. And you don't follow strict rules that were taught to you by your teachers or stuff like this. So you're just going with your instinct and, and making a lot of failures. And, and, and sometimes you have those funny things. And yeah, I, I like it when I think I like mostly the work of people who are doing in a very naive way and just doing it on the side and not having so much of an understanding of who else is doing it. And uh, so I, because it's, it's also very easy to get uh, that the work of someone else uh, gets in the back of your mind and suddenly you think you came up with a silhouette or with a new ideas and then you wake up one morning and you think it's yours like your your you think it you, you created that silhouette overnight but actually you just saw it on instagram two months back and, and <laughs> it's, uh, well, it's stuck in the back saying. of your head yeah, <laughs> yeah so that's that, that's for me it happened to me twice or three times and now i i when it happens to me, when I wake up one morning and I think it's new, so I, I, I cross check with other people first. I say like, okay, I'm gonna I'm do, I'm... remind you of something because yeah, I want to, I want to be careful with that topic. I think, uh, yeah, because stealing other people's design is rarely on purpose, to be honest. You have to be pure evil to do that. So it's, it's always, a, it's always a unconscious, you know, you do it by accident and yeah, you still have to apologize, but you didn't do it. It's your brain that uh, saw the piece by accident. Mm -hmm. That was actually something I was going to ask all is not coming from a potter's or ceramic background, where you kind of take your influence from and where you kind of look to, to like, you know, get in that creative headspace to start kind of working and designing. 
but obviously there there are some some ceramicists the people that I that really pushed me to to get into that craft and uh, there's this lady that uh, is called uh, Valeria Vassi I think she's from Barcelona and she she works with uh, in a way I think her styles some of her pots are sometimes a bit similar and I think still today I mean the thing is with her, her shapes she, she brings this one new shape a year and it's more of a, of a ceramics uh, reseller so she doesn't come up with new stuff so, so, so often maybe twice a year there's a new shape and then she has different colorways and I think when I discovered her work because she was already well settled when I started I really got influenced and I like the minimal aspect and the way they were they were sitting in the living room because yeah for me I wanted to surround myself with beautiful things when I started making ceramics so uh, I was always trying to picture, oh, this would look good on my side table, or this would look good here. And, and the way she displayed her work and created her piece, yeah, it was a big inspiration. It was a bit tricky to, to, to try to not do the same things. Or, uh, but I think, yeah, yeah, I think I, I, I managed to create some pieces that are in the same universe. Like if you would bring them together, you would feel, oh, there's a connection between the two, but they are still very different. And that's also, uh, discovering new technique and like getting really good with all sorts of technique that allowed me to go and execute shapes that I, yeah, that I couldn't do with you. So for instance, like there were shapes that I was envisioning since the beginning and that I was just too bad at pottery to achieve, you know, I was not able to, 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 to execute them. And so I really trained a lot my technique and then eventually some, some, some shape that are kind of like, I would say signature shape of mine uh, came up out of, out of building that technique. So the first two years were really like, yeah, working on the technique, try to get better at this. And so that's also one thing that is a little bit uh, annoying with ceramics is that you have to be really good with your hands in order to achieve uh, what you have in your mind. So when you have the idea, but you're not just not able to do it, it's very, very frustrating uh, to, to, to say like, oh, I, so many crazy beautiful things and I mean it still happens like I have stuff that I know I'm not able to make today or colors or shades that I'm not able to achieve and and I know that I will only be able to achieve them in six months when I will be really good at something so yeah and with a walk it was a little bit like this so when I started being really better I could do and also she uses a technique that is made out of she has molds right porcelain molds or stoneware molds so she just she just pours the liquid porcelain, let's say, and then she unmolds the shape, and uh, and this I only realized like six months ago because before she was not really sharing the the, the process, and so yeah, it's not cheating. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a way of making things, but yeah, when I felt like I'm making it with my hands and assembling all the pieces by hand, and I have to monitor the the consistency. Of it. So for me, it's, it was it was a bit uh, trickier to do something similar, but. Uh, but with the techniques that I know and not using. I was so uh, happy to be able to, to, because I'm really bad at this. And, and, and that's why I told you, Noemi, like, yeah, let's do it, let's do it. <laughs> because <laughs> I need to train. And like <laughs> next, next week on, on Wednesday, there are those, those guys from uh, uh, Architecture Digest, you know, the, this magazine, oh, Ade. Awesome. And they are coming in my house and in my studio to film me and everything. And I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been so terrible. I already talked to them on Zoom, and it was like, when I closed the laptop, I was like, oh, wait, what's wrong with you? Like, you, you talk so much. <laughs> and it's terrible to, when you start hearing yourself speaking and, and saying stuff like this. And so I, I felt like, okay, I need to practice. And as soon as you saw your email, I'm like, okay, I would normally not do this, but yeah, like, it's a great. <laughs> To, to test that was amazing. Yeah, so good. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh. It's nice and refreshing to the camera.